Say no, kids. Did you see the thing in South Dakota where they have a thing called meth? I'm on it. That's there from the ad council. And it's a, it's really bomb and it's uh, trending on Twitter. Uh, drug addiction in the tree care industry, Dan, has run rampant. How many deaths do we know of? All right, Derek. PJ. Who's PJ? So a climber down Norbert, sadly. Left a... A girlfriend with child on the way. Who else have we got? Uh, I guess that's two of... How many are in this area? I don't know. But I'm sure there's more. And you've seen it, Dan. You know? Um, all right, we got, we got to rest up. Hold on a second, Dan. We got to stop. Well, what is it about the tree care industry that tends to attract the druggies? You, you know, I thought about that. But you know what, Dan? It's also in many other industries, like roofers. I was thinking roofers. That was my next Roof, thought. Yeah, roofers, land. I mean, it just... Okay, so what is it about the tree care industry and roofing? Um, I don't know. Is it just like, that's what you get? That's what no. they, That's where they fall into a job? Because they'll hire It's dangerous a trees that nobody with their right minds want to do. Who wants to get up on a roof and... You slip off the roof and you're going to fall three stories and break whatever. You know, like who who, who in their right mind would want to do that? No, break, no roof. Yeah, yeah exactly, crazy. right? Yeah, so, but, you know, if if you're a risk taker, if you know, and, and probably half these guys that are, you know, uh, on drugs are doing that self-medicating because they got all ADHD. They're all freaked out. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and And so, like, like, I got this theory about, you know, the hunters and the farmers, you know, like imagine it wasn't everybody in the Native American, the Plains Indians that would jump on a pony bareback and ride right into a herd of buffalo with a 30 pound bow and try to get up like five feet away so they could get a good shot at the heart. Like not everybody in the tribe did that. There was a select group of guys that were like, this is what we do. And they, so there's almost like a genetic predisposition in certain or who's going to go to war. Not everybody's cut out for that stuff, you know? No, there's, absolutely. There's a certain genetic predisposition to to certain, certain I think it's certain men, you know, males, to take risks. And then you put them in a, in a farmer's world and you shoot them full of, you know, mercury and aluminum, whatever else they're putting in the vaccinations. You, 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 you poison them on their nervous systems on some level and then... Uh, you know, put them out in the world and, and they're going to be freaking out in school and carrying and acting all out, they, you know, tell them to sit down quietly with 30 other kids for, you know, hours at a time over the course of the day. They don't go for it. So then they get this bad self-image and then they're, 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 they're not loving themselves, they're not loving life. And so then they go for some type of, like, let me not feel this. Like, so, so let me flee this type of feeling. What can I do? Drinking and then drugging or whatever, you know? Okay, but here you go. Here's an example then, Dan. I put myself at risk, say, by climbing a tree, a hazardous tree, or I go into a certain neighborhood at 3 a.m. looking for party favors, and those are great risks. And it's like, who in their right mind is going to go into a 22nd in Norris at 3.30 in the morning, you know, searching around through these, you know, pretty dangerous neighborhoods, but yet I'll have a fear of going to a, like a customer of yours saying, Tom, try to sell that stump. And I'm like, no, do you, you, you understand? Like I am selective in what I would do. Is it, you getting it? I, I like, see. You, you I think see. if you go into or places I've been, it's like who in their right mind would want to go there? It's a horrible situation. It's dangerous. But then it's like certain things. I'm like, nope, not going to do it. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you get kind of a thrill from just going into the neighborhood, or is you just all about let me go get myself some rocks here? Well, really, we're not posting this, <laughs> but uh, uh, I mean, I guess it, it, it gets no. There's no thrill going in there. It's like, damn, I should have done it earlier, or something to that effect. But you know, maybe it's all part of the ritual, you know. Uh, and I guess with uh, aren't there any suburban crack dealers? I mean, I, I don't wouldn't know these. There things. are. That'll deliver. Okay. You know, but then it's that weight. It's like, that's just not. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there are. They used to on Mount Pleasant over there off in Upper Marion, over there off of Golf Road by St. David's Golf Club. Yeah. Over there, Brook Street and Bryn Mawr, Thomas Avenue, and 
Bryn Mawr. I hope all the narcs are watching our, my channel, man. Yeah, but now, but any time, and Zubies and Ardmore. Remember Zubies? No. On Spring Avenue. No, don't Anytime remember Anytime there's all. a pocket of people of color, that's where you would tend to find it, sadly, and I'm not disparaging anybody, but in those greater neighborhoods like Highland Avenue and Wayne, you could get it. Parts of Devon. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's there. It's like somehow, yeah, I don't know, I don't get it. But uh, that's it. Maybe they're the only neighborhoods that people won't get snitched on. No, because eventually they draw a lot of traffic and eventually they get shut down because these suburban cops have nothing better to do than ruin somebody's good time. <laughs> there, yeah. you, there you go. Yeah. All right, so how's it feel to be clean? Yeah, it feels good, but... Oh, damn, we're not... <laughs> yeah, oh, No, tell, no. Tell, tell me about it, man. No, nah, no. Nah, What's right. the advice to these young climbers that are, like, the guys that are out there, you know, they know they're hooked, and yet they... You know, oh, they're going to... Uh, no matter what uh, somebody told me when I was young, I wasn't going to listen, but it's like, they were right. They were right, man. It's like, if I had stopped at the age of whatever, X, Y, 23, 24, 25... You know, who knows where I would be, but sometimes you got to travel that path to get where you are and just like run out of gas from it. But even then, and it's like you put yourself in the hole, you know, age 50, no, no driver's license, no real living situation other than living with your girlfriend. And that's tumultuous. And it's like you're living day to day, hand to mouth, man. You got to live the square life, if it were. Live the square life. There's nothing exciting and entertaining about running rampant, going to jail, going to rehab, being on the streets. But this will be a start of the video, Dan. We'll, we'll polish this up a little bit. You know. Um, All right, so, so then what's, what's the advice for the young climbers? You're, like, you're going to have to keep digging. If you want to hit bottom, keep digging. Or whatever. what's the old adage? If you want to hit bottom, stop digging. Or something like that. You know, you just got to stop. You just... Just got to not do it, Dan. We're going to have to redo that video. I don't like how that transpired. Um, well, wh where does God come into all this? Do you think there's a there's a, there's a a place for like a spiritual kind of like asking God for help in your life? Yeah, you know, that, and and there's no definitive answer with that. We we hang every, our life on a maybe. Maybe there's a God, maybe there's not. But if that's the best, I guess, we can hope for, it might be worth the effort to maybe there is a God or some higher deity you know, that's out for us. But I, I just don't, it's hard to grasp it though. Like he's watching over us and he protects us because then why does he protect some but not others? And it's, it's like, I don't know, I don't get it. You know, um, you know, little children or what have It's just, oh, God had a reason. God's mysterious. And it's like, that's such a cop out of an answer, you know. And then you get people who live decadent lifestyles who are just really psychopaths who can just run rampant. You know. Um, I know he gives us free will, apparently, but, you know, or God, how about the old God doesn't give you anything you can't handle? And it's like, come on, I can't handle this. Why are you giving it to me? God's testing you. Well, he knows I'm going to fail it because he's all knowing. Don't test me because you know it's not going to be any good, the results. I'm going to fail it every time. Just make my life easy, and that's what I want, with no effort. Damn. All right, breakfast time. Come on. Well, how about this? Yeah. So, I, I agree. Like, no one could say for sure. I mean, I, I think pe certain people have had, let's call them mystical experiences or, or, or paranormal experiences that would lead them to believe, hey, there's definitely something going on here. And if you've never had one, it's very difficult, tough for you to get out of the scientific mindset. I mean, that's the belief... We all believe in science, right? I mean, that's, sure. that's the modern religion. You, we all have this common set of this dogma that, that we believe that the science has, you know, has these answers about, you know, how physics works, how the world was created, all that stuff, you know. So we're looking to, to the scientists to talk to us about evolution or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is that if you've had a spiritual experience of, of that is outside the... Um, the realm of our our present world view, that's going to change the way you see the world. And it's each individual, Dan. But to believe in God is you might as well believe in Santa Claus. It's it's a friend without. I mean, what evidence is there of a God? And, and perfectly, because you've never had a spiritual experience. Well, who's this? 
but it's like so selective. It's like, oh, God saved me. He found a banker who will give me a second mortgage on my house. Or he, he saved me from rickets. And it's like, come on, man. That was just happenstance or whatever. I don't know. I just don't get it. I mean, I, here's the thing. There's a lot of people that believe like that. And a lot of people that, that say they believe in God, they're only they're only repeating it because this is what they've been trained. They've kind of been, for lack of a better word, brainwashed. Mommy told me that Jesus loves me and, and you know, Jesus, you know. But then, okay, to have a spiritual experience where all of a sudden... You're standing there, and there's a big angel behind you, and you look up, and there he is, and oh, you hear a, you know someone tell you, "Hey, get out, you know, move now," and you step out of the way, and then a big car comes running by, well, you know, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of ex- people that have had experiences like this. People that have, I, I mean, like for me, I've seen spiritual healings take place that would just blow your mind, and people would say, you know, oh, it's all charlatans, it's sleight of hand. No, it wasn't. I'm telling you, it wasn't. So. And what happened for me, even though I thought I believed in God and, and uh, you know, like the stories of the Bible and whatnot, prior to that, all of my scientific belief systems were challenged when I saw these miracles take place. And I had to do a real reevaluation. It was like getting out of the, what I call it, the brainwashing of science, you know. And, and the, one of the other things that helps as far as that goes is that, that, um, if you study the history of science, which I did in college, you realize that science is always constantly evolving. And so, you know, there was a time in the world where everybody believed that that the earth was the center of the universe and on the sun and the moon and all the stars revolved around the earth. Because that's what they looked up in the sky and they saw that happening. And so there was this whole belief system. Anybody that said, wait a second, that belief system isn't right, was considered a heretic or they were considered, you know, you know, delusional or just, you know, everybody was in the box. And then all of a sudden the box just broke down. But now we all think, oh, now we have it figured out. So this modern scientific view of the world, that I'm telling you, that's still the box we're living in. And science itself will, will, will crash that box down. And it's already starting to into some of this quantum physics stuff, you know. So, so it's just like, I wish people would just be a little more flexible in their beliefs and realizing, hey, you know, this is just... Science isn't isn't the answer. It's it's a process. It's like, it's a it's an ongoing re- refining of 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 the viewpoint. Just a simple simple viewpoint. Okay, but how about if I was to ask God to to show me something today, to show me something to let me believe? Would He let me see something? I don't know. Uh, no, but I, you there's know, only one way to find the answer to that question now. Ask. Why don't you do it? Or do okay, it right we'll now. It. No, All I'm not right. going to say a prayer, but I'm just going to say, God, please show me some sign today. And I don't mean a leaf falling from a tree that lands on my hand or a raindrop from the, something. And I'm not saying to see you or see, but something greater than me. I don't know. Just something. Let's Does see it have to be today? Can't you just say like... Well, why can't it be today? Well, I'm just saying like maybe that's not, not God's time. That's, that's, there's like... Well, there, there, there's like, there's I mean, like, you're, you're, it's like imposing your will. God, show it to me today. Well, no, when's he gonna just, show me? Just, I don't know, like, what, I, you don't know, but just, can't you just say, show me? You, okay, you show to... me. Okay, I won't put a time frame on it, but I'll put a time, time frame on our thing. Okay, it's time to eat <laughs> breakfast. No, not that, the other thing. But we got to get these air, uh, the refrigerators. But I like this kind of thing, Dan, where we're headed. I just got to be in a better frame of mind. Okay, well, but, we'll talk about it some more. No, absolutely. And here's, as much as I hate this video, Dan, this is something you can pose when I read Nig on things. And you could just entitle it my name and just post it everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah. Why are you planning on reneging? No, I'm not. But that's in the back of your head. You know you always need some something tangible. Oh, anything that's going to sway me? I don't know, Dan. Uh, do you think I, don't I, care, know. I care less about that? Probably. I don't I know. Couldn't care. Come on, let's get some breakfast, Dan. Get let's some get some breakfast. On, and we'll leave Mark behind. All right. Say goodbye to YouTube people. Goodbye, YouTube. And, uh, I'm, gonna... <laughs> I'm a mess, Dan. I, I, I just am a, I'm that mental patient.